again. I remembered my reluctance to be dragged to the meeting in his suite at the Hotel New Yorker when my mother and I were spending a few days in New York before returning to Detroit after our summer vacation at the Jersey Shore. I would have preferred spending more time at Radio City Music Hall or at the docks watching the ocean liners. I was shy, rather overwhelmed, and spoke hardly a word to this very tall, very gaunt old man. I would have been repelled, as any young all-American boy should have been, to be hugged and kissed by this stranger, if my father hadn't often done the same. This is the way my mother's women friends often acted, but my American mother's brother would have only given me a firm handshake. Little did I realize that Tesla's hugging, kissing, and patting my head would belie his famous idiosyncrasy of an overriding phobia of germs. Surely a young boy would have been teeming with germs. One could therefore speculate that this idiosyncrasy was possibly an affectation designed to preserve his space. While Tesla lived, some considerable degree of his fame endured, in no small measure because of his ability to stimulate the media. However, after his death, the nation and the world were occupied with other more pressing matters war and reconstruction, international political realignments, an unmatched explosion of new technology, a new consumer society, and Tesla's fame and recognition nearly evaporated. Only a few in the U.S. and international scientific communities and the abiding respect and admiration of Serbs and all Yugoslavs worldwide kept his name alive. My awareness of a resurgence of interest in the life and works of Nikola Tesla began in the early 1970s, when I moved from Los Angeles, where it seemed no one had ever heard of Tesla, to Washington, D.C., where at least the name was recognized. In February 1975, my mother phoned to tell me that she had read in the Los Angeles Times that Uncle Nikola was to be inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame, and that I should look into it. I chanced to notice on a local TV news program that evening a short segment monitoring the Hall of Fame and an interview with a girl of ten or twelve who had invented a new can opener or some such. I dismissed the hall as a commercial promotion and went on to something else. Only later did I read a newspaper account about the induction of Tesla, along with Orville and Wilbur Wright, Samuel F. B. Morse and Tesla's nemesis, Guglielmo Marconi, and citing the whole sponsorship by the U.S. Department of Commerce's Patent and Trademark Office. The closest living relative of each honoree was to receive the induction diploma at an elaborate ceremony. Lacking any Tesla, or even any Terboyevich, to represent the family, an officer of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEEE, accepted the Tesla diploma. The IEEE considers Tesla one of the twelve apostles of electrical science and continues to offer an annual prize in the field of power engineering in his name. When I presented myself at the patent office a few weeks later, they were delighted and made arrangements to make a second presentation to me at the 1976 awards ceremony held that year at Congress Hall in Philadelphia as part of the U.S. Bicentennial Year celebration. Since then, there has been an earnest revival of interest in the technological accomplishments of Nikola Tesla and in his personality, philosophy, and culture as well. Part of the drama of his life is that he was a man who not only revolutionized the generation and distribution of electrical energy and made basic contributions to many other facets of modern technology, but that he did so without the specific aim of amassing great wealth. This altruism, which is often criticized as poor business sense, imposed a monetary limitation on future experimentation to test his new innovations. Who knows what advances might have been possible if he had been able to validate them through rigorous experimentation. New science is an expensive endeavor, and finding financial support is a frustrating task for even those as focused as Tesla. Among the associations that have supported the Tesla Renaissance are the Tesla Memorial Society, which I helped found in 1979 and of which I am pleased to be its honorary chairman and chairman of...